is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Laura Barnes. I'm Executive Director of the Great Lakes Regional Pollution Prevention Roundtable, and I will be facilitating our webinar today. Um, just a housekeeping note, presentation slides are available for download on the Glipper website. That's www.glrppr.org, and they're on the meetings page. And if you just page down the page to the, to the webinar archive section, um, you'll, see, you'll see the link right there. Today I'm pleased to welcome Natalie Hummel and Kathy Davey from US EPA who are going to show us how to use EPA's pollution prevention and greenhouse gas cost calculators to measure environmental outcomes. And with that, I will turn things over to Natalie. Um, if you have questions during the presentation, please submit them using the questions pane on the GoToWebinar control panel. There are several places where we'll pause to ask for questions and comments. Um, and I, I'll, I'll read the questions and then um, Natalie or Kathy can respond. So with that, take it away, Natalie. Okay. Can you hear me, Laura? Yes, I can. Okay. Thank you. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, I think this webinar uh, should be very uh, different from most webinars. We're here to actually kind of walk through uh, the tools, and we're going to be providing you with examples um, instead of just um, talking uh, about the tools in general. So I think that would be very helpful. If you have any questions after this is over, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me. My phone number is on the first slide, and my e email address, excuse me, is on the, on the slide as well. And I will uh, recap that again at the end. So we're going to move on now. Also, for those that would like to uh, download the tools, uh, the pollution prevention calculators or tools, these are the websites where they're located. Uh, the first one, of course, is the EPA. And the second one is the National Pollution Prevention Roundtable. Um, we will actually, Kathy and I, will be uploading our newest version of all the tools uh, probably within the next uh, 10 days or so. So uh, you can look for those. But in the meantime, if you want to just take a look at the tools, uh, you're welcome to do that as well. So for today, as Laura indicated, we are going to review the greenhouse gas calculator tool, uh, as well as the cost calculator tool, and then briefly describe the hazardous materials calculator. This is a tool, it's, not <clears throat> it's really an engineering tool kit, so to speak, that converts our gallons into pounds for one of our outcome measures that we will be discussing in, in the next few slides which is um, hazardous materials. For EPA purposes, we actually ask that performance results be reported on an annual basis. And I will give you an overview as to the importance of these tools for, um, for EPA, but I looked at the participant list and it seems that there's a wide variety of participants on the line, so I just wanted to acknowledge that um, there are actually people on the line from small businesses to consultants to NGOs and actually colleges and academic uh, universities. So we appreciate your interest. Again, originally a few years ago when Kathy and I developed these calculators, they were really tailored to the Pollution Prevention Program, uh, its partners in particularly the grantees, so those that are receiving funds from EPA. However, we've noticed over the last year or two that the interest has grown uh, substantially. We've actually trained close to 1,000 people over the last couple of years. Um, we just wanted to make sure that you understand the purpose of the calculators. It's not intended to calculate a program's greenhouse gas or carbon footprint which is a measure of the program's entire greenhouse gas emissions for all operations. If you are interested in getting additional information on that aspect, you can look up that information probably on Google and look for it uh, for the WRI, which is the World Resources Institute, and the Climate Registry. As I mentioned earlier, the EPA has outcome measures. And what we'd like to do is actually 
um, attribute the pollution prevention activities that we do out on the field to actual environmental and economic results and savings. So the outcome measures that we will be talking about today are million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalents, pounds of hazardous pollutants and materials reduced, gallons of water saved, and then the economic aspect, which is the dollar saved. A little bit more about the tools. I think uh, we've done a great job looking at other tools to really make these tools usable. Um, you don't have to have a PhD or a chemistry background or, or anything like that. Uh, I think they're very straightforward. The one thing that I think is actually important is that uh, there's transparency in the tools. So when we get to that aspect, you can actually see the calculations that we've used. You can understand the assumptions that are used. Um, a lot of tools do not give you that opportunity. So there is actually um, a justification section in the tools that provides you the background of the data sources. And in terms of some environmental things, it's not always black and white, as we all know. So we need to weigh out, um, we need to weigh, weigh things out. And so you'll understand that as well. So the first tool, the greenhouse gas calculator, is a tool to calculate changes in greenhouse gas emissions. We all know how important that is uh, for climate change. Uh, the administration just came out uh, with some new initiatives. And what the calculator does is converts the activity values entered. So for instance, um, your kilowatts saved, your gallons of water reduced, to carbon dioxide equivalent. There's also a, a nice feature on the greenhouse gas calculator that will aggregate all your group projects across the board. So uh, you don't have to keep track of that on separate spreadsheets. It's all in the tool. And so if you have a project that's reducing water, saving water, and also at the same time um, reducing greenhouse gas, you can actually see that aggregation on our tool. It also calculates the results of cost savings associated with most of the greenhouse gas reduce, reducing activities entered. So we'll be going over examples related to electricity conservation, green energy, and for those that are not aware, green energy is really the substitution for conventional power. So it's producing electricity without an with the environmental profile that's superior to your conventional power. We are making the assumption with green energy that it produces no greenhouse gas emissions. Again, that can be argued. Um, solar, wind, geothermal, and low impact biomass are examples of that. We also look at stationary and mobile source fuel reductions or substitution. Uh, this is becoming increasingly important for those uh, in agencies and doing a lot of uh, green meetings to understand how they're saving money in terms of um, their air travel, et cetera. And then a lot of agencies are looking to, to go to hybrid or they're looking to uh, reduce to a, a less carbon intensity fuel. We also have greening chemistry, and that actually is a, a substitution of one chemical for another chemical that is uh, that's less, uh, that emits less uh, greenhouse gas. Water conservation is straightforward, and I'm going to have Kathy actually introduce a very exciting new um, aspect of the calculator that we are going to be actually working on for the next year um, on hazardous materials management. So go ahead, Kathy.
Oh, thank you, Natalie, and hello, everyone. Um, the Hazardous Materials Management tab is going to look at um, the, carb uh, the um, uh, carbon dioxide equivalent value of extending the useful life of hazardous uh, material. Um, in, in the um, industrial world, the hazardous materials are products. And extending that product life um, uh, has advantages both that can be calculated in sort of the way that we're used to, which is a conversion of fuel into carbon dioxide savings. But it also looks at the molecular level of the carbon inherent in that material and extending its life before it is um, incinerated or used for energy recovery. So it's capturing both the um, chemical side as well as the fuel conversion side of carbon dioxide. And so we're um, very excited to be uh, delving into that work. We've gotten um, uh, sort of a green light to move ahead in this area. We will be working on it this summer. So stay tuned, and we, we greatly look forward to offering this, this component. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. One of the things we're considering with this is, is uh, perhaps some scenario uses, uh, depending on um, you know, where you sit and how you want to use the tool. So we're very excited about it. Uh, on the economic side, we have a cost calculator that actually does the financial value of hazardous inputs and waste, air emissions, water pollution, water use, energy, electricity. And then there's often a lot of questions on whether we are, are interested in non-hazardous inputs and solid waste. Of course we are. Uh, those benefits often come with projects. Um, we at the EPA, or at least pollution prevention, will track that, but we will not report out on it because it's not related to our outcome uh, measures. We are focused more on hazardous. The first Natalie, I might, oh, this, this is Kathy. Um, I, I think I was supposed to uh, just oh, yeah. um, give a little plug here. Um, uh, another um, project that we have in development is uh, to do a combined version of our tools. Um, so it would be uh, one tool application that would offer the greenhouse gas, the cost calculation, as well as the um, hazardous um, aspect, the gallon to pound converter, and, and other ways to organize um, hazardous reductions into a single tool. So that is uh, something else that is a, a project under construction. Sorry about that. that. I, yeah, sorry. I never got. Um, electricity conservation projects. Um, reduction from electricity conservations are based on your state-specific emission factors. So we actually have that uh, all related to eGrid. And for those that do not know eGrid, it's EPA. And it's called the Emission and Generation Resource Integrated Database. And uh, it, it gets, electricity gets a little complicated, so I'm just going to leave it at that for now. If there's any specific questions on that, you can let me know later. And then your cost calculator, electricity tab, your traditional electricity use will result in cost savings. However, when you purchase uh, green, it's usually a little bit more expensive. Uh, this slide will be updated. Um, eGrid has year 2010 information available. Um, I think there's a little delay here in, in terms of getting the information out, but um, we will be doing that shortly. And this gives you a nice picture of the states in, in, in the United States and, and where we sit with our fuel type. And as you can see, there's still a lot of coal. And um, depending on where you live, there's a, also a strong focus on hydro in the Northwest. So for our first example, we're just going to say Company A developed an electricity conservation program in their New Jersey facility that can serve 25,000 kilowatts. We're going to walk through this. So what you would input into the tool would be, you're going to go to the electricity conservation tab, select the state, which is New Jersey, the electricity conserved, 
and then your unit value, which is kilowatts. Then you will go to your cost calculator, and you will do the same thing, and you will get your outputs. And as Kathy mentioned, we are looking to combine those. So if you were going to do that in our calculator tool, and I'll show you that in a minute, the, uh, your metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent would be 14.391. And this is a small amount. Your cost savings would be about uh, 3,100. You also, as a user, have the ability to enter in your kilowatt hours uh, you know, per kilowatt if you understand and have knowledge of that. So that's a, a new feature as well. Let's see how this works now. Now, these are slides. I'm not going to go back and forth into the actual tool. It's easier to show you here. But as you can see, um, on the, the uh, calculation description is here. And it's very transparent in terms of what, how we calculated that. And again, you can have your national or your state value, whatever you know. So for this example, you go to your state, it's New Jersey, and that is under Project 1. Your electricity conserved 25,000, your kilowatt hours, and then you have your greenhouse gas reduction calculated for you. Next, this is a little different because we are actually showing you how to enter in your unit cost as um, your, your point 1040. And then you can see your savings over on the far right column of $2,600. Your next example is Green Energy Project. Again, it's in New Jersey, and they purchased 40,000 kilowatts of green electricity. You're going to go to your Green Energy tab, and Again, you're displacing fossil fuel energy in our minds. You're going to go to your state, New Jersey, 40,000 electricity consumed for renewable energy in your kilowatt. And again, as I mentioned earlier, there will be a cost factor involved with um, less traditional electricity, and, and you'll, you'll see that. So your greenhouse gas calculator output for reducing 40,000 kilowatt is about 23 metric tons of carbon dioxide. And you will have increased your cost by about $7.40. Now, Kathy and I, we examined that um, assumption before the webinar, and I think that figure is probably off. It looks off to us. So we are going to check the calculations behind the, the, uh, the tool. Just wanted to let you know that. Here you'll see in action, you have New Jersey, 40,000 kilowatts, and then you have your greenhouse gas reduction of 23 metric tons. Again, you're purchasing your green, and the calculator does this for you. Your dollars spent uh, are negative in the friend, so you had increased your cost by $7.40. Oh, this is something that we've, we've talked about before. Hold on a second. Probably should have come before the other example. Um, but we've already discussed this, so I'm going to uh, move on. Your fuel use reduction project from stationary sources only. We calculate our greenhouse gas emissions and reductions associated with reduced fuel use. And we include emission factors for 14 common fuel types that are used to power your stationary sources. Those are organized in the tool from high carbon intensity to low. And then again, on the P2 cost calculator, we calculate the savings from reduced fuel use. Company A 
altered its production of activities, resulting in a reduction of 15,000 therms of natural gas annually. Your input would be on the stationary source tab. And we know it is a um, coming from natural gas. So it's reduced 15,000. And your unit is in therms. In your cost calculator, again, the same information. Your output would be 79.8 metric tons of carbon dioxide in emission reductions and about 10,000 in cost savings. So let's see that. Again, you have um, the calculator description here. And you can't see it, but there would be a range of um, options for you as you scroll across the top for um, greener fuels. And here, under Project 1, we are putting 15,000 as the input value, your therms, and then it converts it to natural gas, ETUs, in case you need that. There's often a need for that uh, in measurement. And your reduction would be about 79.8 metric tons. Let's move on to the cost calculator. You'll see under project one, again, 15,000 therms. And that carries over to the therms reduced. And your dollar savings is in your last column. Kathy? Um, you want me to take a mobile fuel reduction? Um, um, yes, I thought you were going to talk a little bit about the uh, the air. Oh, right, the uh, the air one. So, um, yes, this aspect um, uh, looks at uh, mobile sources. We know that this is um, an area that many um, folks are looking at these days. Um, uh, federal level as, as well as everywhere else. Um, and so um, employee commuting, green meetings, um, reduced travel. So the tool enables you to look at this um, uh, uh, aspect. Um, it gives you the choice of either looking at um, reduced fuel use or you can look at air miles avoided. Um, naturally, you would not want to do both because that would be double counting. Um, and, uh, but it does give you that choice. Um, the cost calculator um, takes care of the savings from reduced fuel use. And um, the uh, examples of the data, data entry options um, are, are very similar. Um, uh, next slide. So looking at our, uh, thank you, looking at our example, uh, we're, not, we, we're not necessarily in the interest of time. We're not going to walk through the, the screenshots of the tools, but again, just uh, briefly showing um, that um, an example where air, air miles were reduced. Um, the greenhouse gas calculator will break this out in terms of uh, length of flight. So um, people can estimate whether it was a long haul or, or short haul trip. Um, the number of flights avoided, um, and that is going to, um, you know, in the one tool give you the greenhouse gas reductions, and the other tool give you your cost savings. Um, and uh, well, we can, Thank uh, you. Natalie, you can take it back. Sure. Well, as Kathy said, this is an important area. Uh, Kathy had mentioned earlier the Green Federal Challenge, and I think scope three of the Kyoto Protocol. So it is important. Um, our information or data sources is based on a program that no longer exists in the EPA. Uh, it was phased out a few years ago called Climate Leaders. But uh, we're looking to um, upgrade this uh, with new additional information. So uh, keep that in mind if you're going to use this uh, tab. And it will look something like this. We're not going to go over this in too much detail. And I'm looking, I'm sorry, I'm looking for the slide. I 
we organize somebody who's not coming up. Okay. I wanted to show you actually a few things before we go to um, global warming potential. And what I had mentioned earlier is all the projects that um, will be aggregated on the aggregate, aggregated tab here. So I wanted to show you that. Uh, unfortunately, it seems that the, and I, I apologize, that the project example for this is not here. This was a substitution. So I apologize for that. And we're going to move on now to reducing and substituting away from high global warming chemical projects. And um, Kathy's actually going to walk through some examples for you. Um, but I just wanted to spend a little bit of time on this slide. Um, the, this is an exciting area where there's actually over 200 chemicals in the calculator now. We've upgraded this based on the International Panel for Climate Change um, the, uh, the fifth report just came out, for those interested. And what we, for those that most will know this, but in case you don't, emissions of gases are translated into uh, CO2 equivalents using a global warming potential. And the 100-year global warming potential is a measure of the global warming impact of gas relative to one gas carbon dioxide. Okay. We are going to move now on to some examples. And I will have uh, Kathy uh, discuss this one. Okay. Thank you, Natalie. So in our first example, which is about uh, reducing um, the use of high global warming potential uh, chemicals um, and substituting away from them. So through the combination of uh, uh, a refrigerant tracking and improved leak detection. Uh, company X uh, is saving 10,000 pounds of, of this particular um, chemical, HFC-134A. Um, they have also replaced um, the refrigerant CFC-12. They replaced 1,000 pounds of that with um, the better choice, HFC-134A. So on the next screens, we'll, we'll see that um, on, on the using the green chemistry tab um, that, um, uh, um, I'm sorry, if, um, uh, could we just go back to the prior sure. uh, screen for just a moment? Thank you. So um, we're going to see um, reflected here both the uh, um, uh, thousand pounds that was replaced and um, the 10,000 pounds that was saved, uh, and, uh, and then the output. So, OK, let's go ahead to the next slide. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, so we see here that um, under uh, project one for this, this um, company, um, there are 1,000 um, pounds avoided of the CFC-12. Um, that particular um, CFC, and then um, the um, further down, the HFC 134A, uh, we're, we're entering, uh, ending up with uh, 9,000 because it was uh, the 10,000 that was uh, replaced, uh, and then the the thousand. So the 10 10 minus one is nine. Um, and let's go to the next slide. Um, and uh, so in this uh, next, actually, um, I think let's, let's skip right to, we already have three examples here. Let's go to the example 6C, which is um, a green chemistry example uh, where they have actually uh, worked at the um, manufacturing level of, of chemistry to, to design the chemical differently. So. Um, company Z is using an improved uh, scaled up process from the bench, bench scale, now using it, going for the synthesis of a pharmaceutical uh, ingredient. Um, and 
so this new uh, synthesis is based on green chemistry principles. Um, using this uh, new approach, they have eliminated uh, the use of 96 tons of methylene chloride. Um, and uh, there were side benefits to that as well, but here we're just looking at the greenhouse gas benefits. So uh, we, uh, we will see that um, on the greenhouse gas calculator, again using the greening chemistry tab, um, that they avoided uh, 96 tons of methylene chloride, which is 192,000 pounds, and then we're going to see that the tab gives us the um, uh, MTCO2E value of that. So uh, on here, all we had to do was go project one. We had to find the right chemical, which is uh, near the top of the list, the methylene chloride, one of the IPCC chemicals uh, with a warming, uh, global warming potential of nine. So it's um, more warming than carbon dioxide. Um, it put in the pounds. And um, uh, is it the next screen then that shows the, no. So somewhere no. on here is the, oh, up on top there um, is the greenhouse uh, gas value. So what, what this tab does, uh, any and all entries that you put in for a particular project are summed at the top under all chemicals, one of the, that first row, and gives you the greenhouse gas reduction benefit. And there we see the 783 and change um, metric tons of, of savings of greenhouse gas. OK, next slide. Yeah, yeah thank you, Kathy. And I just wanted to say about this, this is that there, there's been a crosswalk with the IPCC and our, uh, our EPA re reporting program. Um, and I think what's beneficial about this is there's a CAS number listed, uh, which is the abstract number for the specific chemical, in case you don't know uh, the name and you can find it that way. So I'm going to move on now. We we'll talked a little bit about water conservation projects. Um, the greenhouse gas calculator does examine uh, your water reductions. And we've taken a lot of time on, on this to research it. Uh, your water and energy conservation are linked through the energy that it takes to pump, treat, and transplant transport water. It takes a lot of energy to, you know, to move that water around. Um, what we don't do on this calculator is we do not account for the heating of water because that is already captured in the electricity tab. So I wanted to let you know that. Anyone interested in the data source for that, we can provide that as well. And then for the cost calculator, the water use tab, the calcul calculator actually calculates the savings from reductions of incoming well water. We do not take into account, again, the heating water, but merely the amount of water that comes in through a pollution prevention or sustainability activity. Anything else, Kathy, you'd like to add to this slide? I think that covers it, Natalie. Okay, thank you. I won't spend too much time on this, but um, we, again, have a company uh, in New Jersey that, through the installation of magnetic pulse technology, saved um, 35 million gallons of water. And what you would do for that is you'd go to your greenhouse gas calculator, specifically the water conservation tab. The state, again, is New Jersey. We're keeping that consistent. And then you will have your output, which is your metric tons of about 66.5 metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent, and your cost savings will be calculated for you. And that is about 73, about 74,000. Again, you have the uh, information right here. Your state where you can put the US if you wanted to there, your national uh, average, and non-heated water, Again, 35 million, and then your metric ton shows up under your greenhouse gas reduction. This is your cost calculator information here. Okay, entering your raw water saved or reduced. Okay, 
Now Kathy's going to talk about a very interesting topic for uh, pollution prevention and how to measure water pollution. And I'm going to hand this back over to Kathy now. Thank you, Natalie. Um, uh, it's interesting that um, you know we we track both water itself, but then we have to find a way to distinguish uh, the pollution in the water. So uh, in this particular aspect, we're going to be looking at the pollution in the water. So um, the uh, the the cost calculator um, is going to look at the value of uh, the, the savings from reduced discharges of water pollutants. Um, we're looking at uh, contaminants in water and stormwater, discharge to sewer systems, and so forth, injection wells, groundwater. Uh, water pollutants include bio tends to be these are the ways that water pollution is accounted for um, in biochemical oxygen demand, in chemical oxygen, oxygen demand, in toxics, in nutrients, uh, in total suspended solids. Um, so. The, this aspect, because here we're just looking at the toxic side and not the energy side, so this is not going to um, show up in our uh, greenhouse gas calculator. Um, so uh, th this is um, uh, strictly something that, that at this point relates to our cost calculator. Um, and uh, as, as we develop the more comprehensive version of this tool, which also looks at the hazardous piece, um, uh, we'll be covering that in, in that new feature as well. But for today, this is, this is relating to our cost calculator. Um, next slide. So in our example, um, a company has adopted a new uh, filtration system in one of its plants, thereby reducing the quantity of the BOD and the COD, biological oxygen and chemical oxygen demand, uh, their discharge, and so they've reduced it by 500 pounds. Um, and uh, again, as Natalie said, we've we've done the research to get um, some of the average numbers for this, and uh, so the cost calculator will show you that um, that's $141 savings. Uh, and, and again, on on the cost calculator, you enter your state, you enter your value for quantity, you enter your unit um, pounds. Um, next slide. So um, pretty straightforward. Um, the the state um, get get the right uh, pollutant column, uh, put in the value, uh, the unit selection, a choice of pounds or gallons. I uh, here they've measured it in pounds, uh, and then the calculator uh, with that information produces the dollar savings for that state. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is Natalie. This is uh, exactly what I wanted to show you earlier. Um, the greenhouse gas calculator actually has an aggregation tab, and it will take all of your projects and put them into a million metric tons of carbon dioxide, which is the dark gray on the, the last column. Um, the reason we do that is because that's the unit of measurement for our program. Um, but if you do not want to do that, you can just use the light gray area, um, which is the total by project, and it will add up all of the projects for your uh, activities, I think, which is a, a nice feature. And again, this is a uh, cost calculator aggregation aspect as well. This also, I just wanted to let you know, for those on the line, gives you the ability to enter in multiple projects on the left side, which is something that uh, the end users have wanted. And I think, Kathy, you wanted to talk about this uh, in terms of the uh, aggregation of the P2 cost savings with the greenhouse gas impact. Yes. Uh, this is a new feature. Um, up until this point, the uh, greenhouse gas tool allowed you to take, uh, for example, a kilowatt hour, and it would give you the greenhouse gas value. Then you could turn to the cost calculator and your kilowatt hour and get the cost savings. Um, it did not offer the user a, a 
a direct comparison of the greenhouse gas savings you got to the dollar savings. Um, that required, um, you know, some manipulation, you know, writing stuff down, um, going back and forth between the two tools. We are now making the relationship between the greenhouse gas reductions and the dollar savings um, directly um, available in the greenhouse gas tool. Um, this was important for EPA in terms of the reporting that um, comes into us. We think it is going to help users. We think it is going to help grantees to, uh, you know, verify their the numbers that they that they're entering and be able to see that direct comparison themselves. Um, so many aspects of the greenhouse gas calculator now offer the um, cost savings aspect of it directly in the tool. Um, once all our tools are integrated, um, you know, this will um, only have to be done once. Now there's the, um, it's just duplicated. This shows up in the greenhouse gas tool. It also shows up in the cost tool, but again, in a way that makes the comparison between greenhouse gas and dollars readily available and transparent. Thank you, Kevin. And um, this is the, I was just going to describe this. This is the hazardous materials kind of engineering toolkit, I call it, gallons to pounds. Um, we have a, a list very similar to, set up very similar to both of these calculators. On the bottom, you'll see uh, common solvents, fuels and oils, refrigerants, household paints, auto paints, et cetera. And then you actually click on that, and you'll be able to um, find your uh, common solvents or your fuels and oils. We, we found that this is very useful for people that are on the ground actually you know, trying to do that conversion and trying to understand you know, what they can count and not count, that kind of thing. So I think it works well. Again, I wanted to share the location of the tools. We will be upgrading. Um, we have FAQs which are, you know, facts, uh, questions and answers about the tools, the calculators, and our justification of uh, our data sources uh, readily available. Those will be updated. Uh, we have all the tools that are updated. And then hopefully with Laura assistance, we will actually have this uh, live broadcast. Again, if you have any questions, um, in the future, please do not hesitate to contact me. Uh, I would appreciate any feedback you have on if the calculator, if the calculation is off in your mind, or any clarification you need. Uh, and again, I would also like to know how you're using the tools, and any positive or negative feedback would be helpful as well. Okay, Natalie. We have Natalie and Kathy. We do have um, quite a few questions that have come in over the course of the the talk. Um, the first one relates back to the um, calculation of ener of renewable energy, and the person wanted to know if it was a real energy purchase or a renewable energy credit purchase. If that's what the calculator is designed to calculate. Um, well, I, I believe I understand the question for the green energy energy tab. We do have both. So um, it would be your, if she's talking about um, RECs, yep. uh, we have the ability to do that. So energy certificates and then the ability um, for, you know, your, your reduction and substitution of different energy. So it's both. And then um, somebody else wanted to know, are these annual figures? And that question was asked during the discussion of the fuels calculator tab. So I would assume that refers to, you know, when you're putting the numbers in, what are, what numbers are you, are you getting at annual numbers? Or maybe maybe it's the data source itself. But, but we, we do actually um, want the numbers reported annually. Uh, in terms of the data sources, uh, some of those are updated, you know, every two years or so. Uh, and again, I would need to know exactly what, um, you know, fuel type they're talking about. And if they have any questions regarding sources, uh, everything's, you know, right there in the tool. Yeah, and the, that per, um, 
I don't actually have, yeah. If that, the person who asked that question, if she would like to follow up with a little more detail, we can, if, if assuming that she didn't answer the question, your question, um, we can, we can try again. Um, and then the person who had asked about renewable energy direct purchases asked, aren't they, they aren't calculated the same as renewable energy Credits. Real energy purchases, right, or renewable energy credits? Um, I, I, we have a, I think this is right, Natalie. We we have a tab. We, there there are columns for each of those. So, um, you know, in our examples, we we're doing just that. We're just giving an example. Um, the the tool itself has a column for each one, and the calculations and the justifications are are there in the tool as to how we arrived at each one. Okay, thank you. For, for, for pollution, I mean, I guess for pollution prevention, um, you know, we haven't seen, exactly for our grants, I should say, we haven't seen too many RECs, but um, there, there's a whole discussion about what's an offset and what's an REC, and if that person has any additional questions, um, they, can, they can contact us. Again, we got a lot of this information to tell you through the Green Power uh, program with uh, with EPA. Um, that's that's how we kind of wrestled with it. Okay, um, somebody had a question about um, external review of the calculators. Have any of the calculators gone through a formal external review process um, as part of the QA? You know, as part of QA on the calculators. Well, we we have we have not gone through a I guess what they're asking is a peer review. Yeah. Um, we have we have not done that. No. Um, what we have done, I, I think that would take a significant amount of um, energy and resources and time. Um, what we have done though is vetted these uh, measurement tools over the last couple of years through uh, a process that we gathered stakeholders together to examine the tools, to provide feedback, and based on the, the webinars, we've had actually, um, you know, feedback. Um, so no, no formal process. I just want everyone to be aware that, you know, we're building these tools to assist people, um, you know, doing as much data quality and transparency as we can. But these tools have been, you know, pieced together with um, limited resources over time, and, and uh, Kathy and I have worked on these tools extensively um, over the last couple of years. So um, I hope that answers the question. And okay. this is Kathy. I, I, I would just add because we have um, tried to to make an effort to look at um, the the tools that the uh, that the agency already had when 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 we built our tools. Um, uh, and always being consistent with the agency or explaining if there was a choice why we picked one. So we're standing on the shoulders of um, what may well have been more rigorous vetting processes for some of these things, particularly when it comes to the AIR program and eGrid and, and some of these other, um, you know, uh, wi widely used and, and um, you know, more formally recognized tools. So. Um, wherever possible, we tried to stand on the shoulders of what was already done uh, and yeah. recognized within the agency. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and what we've tried to do is, I mean, we, we've worked, you know, like Kathy said, extensively. We've worked with um, the, the water program extensively on getting the right data sources. Uh, we've worked with, um, we worked with the AIR program. we worked with Energy Star. So it does reflect the multimedia aspect of P2. So I, I hope that's helpful. Okay, and then there's a question about data. Um, the person wonders which IPCC report was used to um, for the global warming potential calculations. The 2013. Okay, so the most recent one. Yes. Can you send me a link? Can you guys send me a link to that so I can put it up on the Clipper website? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to. I'm collating all the links as I go. So. No problem. Okay, great, thanks. Um, let's see. 
Oh, um, and somebody else um, wants to know if abbreviations like BOD and COD are explained somewhere in the Excel worksheet because that would make it more user friendly um, if those acronyms are actually described and defined. Yes. They are? Yes. Okay. Good deal. There, there's, a, there's a page on the uh, Excel spreadsheet that has, uh, I'm not sure if it's call definitions, but there's one for justification. There's, uh, there's another one for um, all, the, all the definitions. For, for, you know, abbreviations and things. You know, kilowatt or BTU, that kind of thing. Okay, and then I have another question. Um, somebody wants to know if there's a separate calculator input for New York City versus New York State as a whole. No. Okay. No, and, and I'm not sure what the question is about, but it, electricity has like, um, you know, NERC kind of things, uh, you know, the multi-grid kind of situation, so New York might be lumped with something else, but we don't disaggregate that based on the city. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that is a good point. Um, you know, we, we discovered that uh, for energy, for the electric, uh, electricity grid, that um, where you, at least for that particular aspect, where you live may not determine where your electricity is coming in from because there are these regional mm -hmm. uh, approaches to managing uh, electricity. Okay, another question, um, and I, you may need some clarification on this one. Um, so if the person is still online and can provide clarification, that would be great. Um, for what kind of material SF6 is available? I'm not, yeah. Oh, SF6? Yeah. What, 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 I'm sorry, I don't understand the, the word material. Um, is, is that person asking is SF6? part of the global warming potential chemical, or are they asking what materials have SF6 or produce SF6? I'm not sure. <laughs> so if, that, if the person who asked the question can give us a little more information, that would be great. Um, yeah, that would be a big, uh, but I, I, think, I think on that. Oh, um, what, what material produces SF6? Oh, like what does it show up in? And Natalie, uh, am, am I remembering correctly? I think this is an area, it has been for, for some years, an area of focus within um, EPA's AIR program about that yeah. specifically because it has such a high global warming potential. So if, that, um, if more information is desired on that, um, we could be contacted and, and put that person in touch with um, that, you know, program within AIR where they, I think, focus on that extensively. Okay. I think, yeah, I think if I recall, it's, it's a lot to do with refrigerants um, that, that produce the SF6. So, you know, your air conditioning units, your refrigeration, things like that, if I'm recalling correctly. So there's trade-offs. So, so if I understand it, you're helping, um, you're helping the ozone, but at the same time, you are creating um, pretty, pretty high global warming potential. Um, but like Kathy said, we can put you in touch with uh, with those individuals. Okay. Yeah, there's people who devote themselves to it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next question. Um, is there a way to determine the reduced greenhouse gas emissions from treating stormwater with green infrastructure rather than sending to the wastewater treatment plant? Could you could you say that again? Yeah, repeat that again. Please. Is there a way to determine the greenhouse gas reductions associated with tr for, with treating stormwater with green infrastructure versus sending it to a wastewater treatment plant. So using, you know, using stormwater or green infrastructure tools. But basically to avoid sending it through the power plant? Yeah, it was, yeah, is, I mean, is, it, yeah, is there, is there a, a way to calculate the reduced greenhouse gas emissions from using green infrastructure like permeable pavement? Right. How, does that, how yeah. would our tool deal with that? Right. Um, um, just thinking out loud here, uh, I'm wondering if that is, uh, Natalie, um, 
it would it would essentially be that much water that quantity of water uh, avoided um, and therefore that much energy uh, you know avoided so I mean I think it would I think it would yeah, work I mean, but how would you know that I mean, I guess I guess the person using it would have to know that the green infrastructure that there there was kind of like no offset, you know, that yeah. whatever the green infrastructure activity was wasn't using energy itself. Um, and I guess if there was sufficient doubt, then you know it would be up to the user to to recognize that that there were these um, offsets or trade offs. It's like a pre, almost like you'd have to go out and do like uh, the Navy does with the low low impact development, like a pre and a post thing. Um, we may have to talk about it offline. Yeah, I think so. That's that's a, that's not an easy one. Okay, so if the person um, who asked that question wants to contact Natalie, um, it sounds like that's something they'd be happy to talk with you in more detail about. Um, next question is: Please discuss the approach to calculations of reduced negative human health impacts. Uh, that's a very interesting topic. Someone here at EPA was just talking about that before the webinar and wondering if our cost calculator tool might be expanded to uh, account for that. So I'd say that's an area of um, interest within EPA in terms of looking at sustainability measures and the um, impact to the community and how that translates into economic benefits so that Economic benefits are not just considered from a facilities perspective, but from um, the community perspective. So it's a promising and interesting area that our tool does not currently address. Kathy, let me ask you a question, though, on the, um, the hazardous materials management tab. Uh, wasn't there a, a, some information on the GEM model that addressed human health? And I, I thought it related to toxicity, but I wasn't. Uh, well, for, yeah, that's an interesting area too. For um, you know that those tabs under development are probably um, you know may have potential for for making these kinds of links. Um, that cost calculation work that we've done, but have not yet incorporated in in any tool, um, is not so much health based as um, uh, well, I, I think it came up as, as a, a sort of a policy discussion, but not a, a, with no numeric value put on it. Let's put it that way. It was more of a, 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 a qualitative discussion here within EPA um, that we got into in that area. I think the I quantitative numbers had more to do with reduced transport, reduced treatment, um, reduced regulatory costs. Thank you. I think it's a very interesting area and and um, we would be happy to take input as this issue gets teased out within EPA. Okay, next question. Does the calculator treat biomass as carbon neutral? What biomass does? Uh, well, I thought there was a trade-off on the, on the bio bio uh, fuel aspect. Um, I'd have to go back to the justification. Um, I thought that there were, we, we, we did a middle of the road approach for that. So I would have to double yeah. check the justification uh, section for that. Now, I'm sorry, I don't have that, that off the top of my head. Okay. That's a good question, but um, it's on our FAQs, I believe. And um, it, it, it does wrestle with the two the two uh, two areas. I think we went with something on the, the science that was uh, published in the science magazine. Okay, great, thanks. I will see if I can find the uh, FAQ if the answer is in the FAQ, and I will post it on the Glipper website with the slides and stuff so that people can look at it later. Yeah, it's, it is in the FAQ. Thank you. Okay, next question. I'm currently working in a sportswear manufacturing company, and this year the company saved a significant amount of fabrics from going through, going to waste through, through efficient production practices. My question is, how can I convert the reduced fabrics consumption to greenhouse gas amount? Hmm, 
exciting question. Um, I I um, would think that this it would take some knowledge of what went into um, I guess manufacturing the fabric in terms of its hazardous and non-hazardous components, um, and you know what normally would have happened. Um, I I would just um, if if it if it has to do more with um, reduction in in non-hazardous um, quantities than the warm tool that EPA offers um, is specifically designed to to deal with that. Um, but if it's it it may be a, a sort of a process of thinking through the the steps. Um, any help we can provide on that, we would be be happy to do so. Natalie, can you think of anything else? Yeah, no, I think I think we had, we we've had that question when I when I'm working on electronic standards for servers. You know, what, what but you really have to have the you have to map out the process, and uh, you have to understand what your baseline is um, based on that. Uh, so it takes a lot of uh, effort because you know you've got energy, you've got um, materials, you've got you've got a lot to uh, walk through and, and, and measure. So one thing in terms of fabric, if, if I understand it, for manufacturing, um, you might want to ret return to the um, Sustainable Apparel Coalition, which is SAC. Now they have a tool uh, that can probably assist you with this that's uh, weighted out. There's, I believe the sensitivity analysis done with your, your different areas that you're seeking to measure, and it is actually uh, a voluntary um, effort that's uh, both international and domestic. So uh, I think I would turn to that uh, resource. Okay, and just FYI, I'm sending those links to all attendees so that they'll have them. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and then somebody just had a comment about community impact. She said that um, you could do it based on particulate reduction since there's good data on um, particulate matter and heart attacks. It was just, just a suggestion. So the relation to health impacts to calculators, to the calculator. Um, and okay. I don't see any other questions. So unless unless there are, I'll go ahead and um, do my closing spiel um, and kind of keep an eye on the question queue, but, uh, but we are at a little bit over two, past 2 o'clock. So um, thank you guys so much for presenting today. Um, once again, the presentation slides and then the links mentioned during the webinar, the presentation, are available on the Glipper website on the meetings page. Look for a follow-up email tomorrow that will include a link to a feedback form. Please fill it out and let us know how we're doing. I will be sharing the results of the, of, um, of the feedback with um, Natalie and Kathy. So if you have comments about the calculator as well, you can put, you can put those in. Uh, um, the email will also include a link to the archived webinar, which I encourage you to share with your colleagues. Um, I will also have a link on the meetings page. And we'll be posting the archived webinar to Glipper's YouTube channel um, sometime in the next couple of weeks depending on how long it takes to get the video converted. So thank you to everyone.